everyone. Welcome to my yarn room. My name is Ginger. I am the Yarn Geek. And today I am going to attempt to show you how to make a super easy cardigan out of one cake of yarn. Now granted, the one cake of yarn is humongous. It is and I'm sure you've seen it around everywhere. It is the huge Karen anniversary cake. It is ginormous. Now I've made a sweater already, a cardigan out of this, and you might've seen it if you've watched any of my other videos. In fact, I'll put a link below to the video where I showed it. And not only did I make a cardigan, but I also added on a cowl, all with one cake of yarn. Now this cake is a six weight, feels more like a five weight, I would say, but it's labeled a six weight. And there are, let's see, how many yards are there? 1,061 yards. It weighs 35.3 ounces. This is a heavy yarn cake. The best thing about this cake is it has no calories. <laughs> okay, so um, let me show you the cardigan that I made before. Now this is the cardigan. And um, da, 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 da. like I said, we will put a picture or post the link of what it looks like, but this is basically it. It's a short cardigan. And I'll even post a picture. Maybe I've gotten my editing skills up enough that I can put a picture right there or a picture right there. We'll see. <laughs> if I haven't figured out how to do that, that's just gonna look goofy. But um, this, this cardigan is not color controlled, which means I just started with one end of the cake and just went with it. So that's why the stripes are, there's really no um, like set out plan to the stripes. They just happen when they happen. And that's why we've got these little, uh, where it changes color. That's not me changing the color. That's that's just where the color changes in the cake. But that's the way I'm gonna show you how to make this one. Just because I wanna show you an ease, a super easy sweater to make. And um, this is the arm. Now you can see the arms are a little, they're not even either. Now later on, probably in a couple of weeks, I'm going to uh, make another one of these sweaters, do another tutorial, but I'm gonna make it with the color pooling. But I figured, uh, you know, might as well try the easy one first since this is my first tutorial and then graduate up. Now, uh-oh, uh oh, yikes. Makeup malfunction. <laughs> okay. So um, let, me sh let me show you the cowl. This is a huge cowl. So the sweater and the cowl were included in that whole cake of yarn. Now, the measurements for this cowl, I usually make large sweaters. I like big, I like my sweaters to be baggy. And so this is a large which means it's 40, 40 around, 40 inches around. And uh, which means it's 20, crosses, 20 inches across the back, which would be 20 inches on the front. But in this case, since it's a cardigan, what I have done is make eight inches on this side, eight inches on this side, and four inches in the middle, or just whatever adds up to 20. Sometimes I like to make a smaller opening for the neck, which would make it say nine inches 
nine inches and two for the middle uh, so that it all adds up to 20. Um, but whatever, whatever we decide to do, and that's why this is highly customizable. Um, you can make it, you know, if you decide that, hey, you know, I want it to be smaller or I want it to be larger, all you need to do is take off those stitches so that the front and the back equal half of whatever you are around. So say that you decide you need to make a 36, then that would be 18 inches for the back, 18 for the front, which you would divide into two front pieces and a strip for the middle, which say might be eight, eight, and two, if that makes any sense. And it'll make more sense as, as we work on it because I'll show you each individual piece as we work on it. Now this one I made to be shorter. This one sits right above my hip and I'm 5'3". Um, I am going to make this one today a little bit longer, uh, probably a good four inches longer just so that it goes maybe like right below, right below the booty. Uh, just because in the winter time, or not the winter time, but the fall, fall and winter, I personally like to have sweaters that hang down low. Uh, they just are warmer. They keep the warmth in better, I think. So, um, why don't we get started? And I can kind of explain as we go along. Oh, and another reason um, I think that we'll have enough for this is because this cowl is huge and I think that's more than enough left over to give the extra yarn for that, uh, extra couplet, extra four or five inches, probably four inches that I'm going to put on the bottom. I don't want, I don't want to make it so long that it's a duster. Okay. So now what I've done is... I have chained up 114 stitches to start out and 114 stitches is how long the chain needs to be to go from uh, all the way in the front around and all the way down the back. So why don't we get started? I think it's just so much easier to show you. Oh, I was looking for my hook. And the stitch that I'm going to use, or that we're going to use, is a herringbone stitch. And it is, I would say it's a variation of the double crochet. Um, let me, in fact, it's called herringbone double crochet. <laughs> okay, so. Let me see if I can do this. I don't have all the right equipment to, to make perfect camera angles, but I'm going to try to show you the herringbone stitch. Okay, so you've got your yarn right there. Um, wrap it over once and then put it through the one, two, three, third chain from your hook right there. Oops. And then Pull it over, pull it through the chain, and then pull it through that next loop on your hook, and you should have two hooks, or two hoops. And then you wrap it around again, pull it through that one, wrap it around again, pull it through the remaining two. And that's the herringbone double crochet. Let's try it again. Okay, you wrap it around once, Put it through the chain, wrap it around again, pull it through the chain, and pull it through the next loop on the hook. So you'll pull it through two that first time. Then you wrap it around again, you'll pull it through one, and then you'll wrap it around again and pull it through two. Okay, so let's try that again. Wrap it around and put it through the chain wrap it around, pull it through two, wrap it around, pull it through one, wrap it around, and pull it through two. Okay, 
and you can see, whoops, kind of how that stitch is starting to look. Okay, let's try to get and wrap it around, put it through the chain, wrap it around, pull it through to the chain in the next hoop on the hook, wrap it around, pull it through one, wrap it around, pull it through two. Okay, one more time. We're gonna wrap it around, put it through the chain, wrap it around, pull it through two, wrap it around, pull it through one, wrap it around, pull it through those two. Okay, so this is what the side facing you should start looking like. You'll start seeing the herringbone pattern. Now what you'll do, and what we'll do, is crochet the rest of the length of your, of your chain with the herringbone, double herringbone stitch like I just saw you. And we'll finish that up and I'll meet you at the end of this chain and we'll turn. Okay. Hello. I'm back. So as you can tell, it's been a, it's a little later in the day now because I took my hair down and uh, I've got my lighting on because um, it's a little later in the day and my son's not coming through the windows. Whoops. Okay, so we are at the end of this row and we're going to turn and go into the next row. So what you want to do is, let me, let me get in a good position here. Ah, <laughs> I told you I'm kind of wonky at this tutorial thing. Okay, so what you want to do is chain, oops, chain two and then we are going to treat that chain that you turn with like it's the first stitch of the row. So we're not going to crochet into that first chain right there. We're going to crochet into that second chain or the sec not the chain, but the stitch. We're not going to crochet in that. Oops. Let's see. We're not going to crochet in this first stitch. We're going to crochet into this second stitch from the from the hook. So then we start all over again with the herringbone double crochets and just wrap around, put your hook in the stitch, wrap around, pull up through the stitch, pull up through that second hook on the chain, wrap around, pull through one, wrap around, pull through two. So you go under the stitch, pull up and pull through that first chain on the stitch, then wrap around, pull through one, pull through two. So it's just like on the last row, wrap around, Pull through two, pull through one, pull through two. And then just keep doing that down the entire row. And when you get to the end, you will have 112 herringbone double crochets. Then we'll turn around and do it all over again. So I'll meet you at the end of the row. Okay. So now we've gotten to the end of our row and we're going to turn and start row three. Now what you'll do again is chain two and then when you turn around, you won't crochet in that first chain. You'll go into the second chain from the hook because we're treating the chain as one of the stitches in the row. So. Here we go. We'll go right, right in there. Go through two, go through one, go through two. And we're still making the herringbone double crochet. 
So wrap around, put through the stitch, wrap around, pull through the stitch, and the first one on the hoop, or on the hook, wrap around, pull through one, wrap around, pull through two. And then we just do that all the way down this row for a total of 112 stitches. And remember, this, this first chain is included in the stitches, so there'll be 111 herringbone double crochets, and then this first stitch is that chain. So now, we'll go all the way down row three. Okay, so we're at the end of our row, and this, this stitch right here is the 111th one. Now when you get to the end of the row, and there's just this, this one remaining stitch left from the previous row that is counting as a stitch, I don't go in the top in the top chain, what I do is I make that last stitch, I just go through the whole, I just go through the, the loop that that chain makes. So I don't stick it through the chain stitch right there. I just, I just put it through that whole hole right there. And then it makes the same number of stitches. So that last stitch right there is the 112th stitch of the row. And then chain two and start all over again. And then just remember that every time you turn a row, you don't crochet in that, that first stitch right there. You go to the second because this chain counts as the first stitch. So wrap it around it through, put it through the stitch, wrap it around, pull it through this stitch, and then pull it through that first loop on the hook, wrap it around, pull it through one loop, wrap it around, pull it through the last two loops. And then just go down the whole row, 112 stitches, down the whole length, and Keep doing that until your piece is eight inches long or the width of what you want it to be for the front here. And remember, I'm, I'm making mine at eight inches. So I will stop at eight inches and give you the number of rows that I had uh, for my piece. Okay, see you at the end of eight inches. Okay. Now, this is where we are now. It kind of looks like a, like a scarf. <laughs> so if you want to stop right here, you've got yourself a nice scarf. <laughs> but I'm thinking you probably don't. So let me tell you how many rows this it took to make eight inches. It took 13 rows. So by now, we are at row 13, and we're ready to start making the, um, the opening of the front of the sweater. So what our next step to do is just fold your sweater in half and take a look at it. Whoops. Ta-da! And this is going to be the length and the front of the sweater. So what we're going to do now is kind of the same thing as before, but only go halfway. So, oops, I just took out one of my stitches. Let me get that back in. And chain two and from there we're only going to crochet halfway on this row which would be 56 stitches 
So only 56 stitches. And once again, let me see if I can show that. We go in the, not the first, but that second stitch from the hook. And we're just going to go ahead and make the herringbone double crochet. And we'll end up making that stitch 55 times because remember that first chain two counts as a stitch. So crochet, let's see, there's the one here and then 55 of these and then I'll meet you on the other side. Okay, now here we are. This is what your sweater should be looking right, like right now. Um, I've crocheted the first row of that, of the back of the sweater, well, the, the from where it divides from the front. And now what we're going to do for the next few rows is to do the same thing we did before, but just half the length of the sweater. So 56 stitches back and forth until we have a strip in the back that's four inches wide. And um, we will meet again at the end of this row, but I think you already know where this is going. <laughs> I chained two, put it in the second, second stitch from the front, and then just herringbone double crochet. So, okay, I will meet you in four inches. Okay, this is where we are so far. This is what your sweater should be looking like. And this is the four inches of the back. And to get these four inches, I crocheted six rows. Six rows of the herringbone double crochet. And it's exactly half of the width of this long piece that we were crocheting before. Um, now what we're going to do is, by the end of six rows, you should be, your thread should be down here. So what we're going to do is turn around, crochet up this side, up those 56 stitches, well, the one chain two, 55 stitches and then from here where we end off after the 56th stitch we are going to chain 58 stitches and the reason we're going to chain 58 stitches is because when we get to the end of this chain we're going to turn around and put the first herringbone double crochet into the third chain from the end of that chain. So here we go. We will chain two right here. One, two. And then we are going to herringbone double crochet down to here, from here to here. And I'll meet you on the very end of that. Okay, so we've come to the end of the 56 stitches coming back up that little half back piece. And now we are going to chain 58. So just chain 58 and we'll be right back. Okay, now that we're at the end of that chain, 
this is what it should look like. See that? You can see the whole lapel area of the sweater starting to form. And then it goes on to the back. So where we are right now is at the end of this chain. And we are going to start all over again with that herringbone double crochet. And just go into not this, oops, let me get a little closer. Not that stitch, not that stitch, but the third chain from the hook. And then we're going to pull that through the chain, pull that through the first loop on the hook, wrap it around, pull through one, wrap it around, pull through two. Okay, so we'll do that again. Wrap it around the hook, put it in the chain, wrap it around again, pull through the chain, pull through that first loop, wrap it around again, pull it through another loop, wrap it around again, pull it through two. And so we're back to the 112 stitches, whoops, all the way down the side. So whoops, got a piece of thread there. So we'll be putting the half or the herringbone double crochets on that chain and keep going once you get to this part right here you'll have 56 stitches into the chain and then you'll have another 56 going forward on this for a total of 112. So let's get that finished and I'll meet you at the end of the row. Okay, so we are at the end of our row, and this is what your total sweater should look like so far. Ta-da! See if I can get all the way to the end. <laughs> it's a kind of long one. So, this is the first row of the 112 stitches. It's going to look just like this section, but on the opposite side. So we need 12 more rows so that this plus that 12 will be 13 rows, which will equal eight inches. So turn it around and start over. And I will meet you at the end of eight inches. Okay, so once you get to the end of that eight inches, you will have what looks like a vest with open sides. Like you could put it on you like this. And it's like this. So what you wanna do next is sew these sides up together right below the arms. And I've already counted out how many stitches you need to stitch this up. Just match the stitches together on both sides and seam this up with, whoops, actually this one's a little small, with your big uh, yarn sewing needle and some yarn. Now, with this one right here, um, actually I'm gonna do the, the other side first. See, I've still got this, this big piece of uh, yarn left over that is attached to my ball. Uh oh, a little bit of it came undone. So what I'm going to do is tie this off and oops, as soon as I get these crocheted back in, <laughs> I was taking some pictures of it earlier and some of the stitches came out. Okay. And I'll say we're going to be stitching up the side 
Let's see, what's 56 minus 18? 38. Okay, so we're going to be stitching up the side about 38. Stitches. So I'm going to cut off maybe a yard and a half, two yards, just to make sure that I have enough here to stitch up. And we're going to be stitching on the wrong side. At this point, um, neither side of your, of your sweater is right side or wrong side, so it doesn't matter. Just make sure to, um, if you stitch up, if you have it this way and you're stitching it, then make sure that you don't fold it the other way. That and stitch your wrong side out. You want to have the uh, the seams on like the wrong side on both sides. Okay, so here we go. I'll meet you after you stitch 38 stitches. Okay, now once you have those 38 stitches sewn, it will look like this. Just sewn up to about right here, and then you'll have the open sleeve. Now, what, what you might want to do, and I always do this before I, uh, I sew up the other sleeve, is to make sure the arm opening is going to be the size that I want it. Oops. <laughs> it's kind of hard to try on when uh, one of the sleeves isn't sewn yet. But this is how big the arm opening is right there. And that is good with me. I like that. Now, if you want it um, to be a little bigger right here, just leave a couple more stitches undone. If you want it to be a little more snug, then, uh, you know, close it up a couple more stitches. Just however you like. That's that's why this is so customizable. Um, but I, mine is right at 38 stitches and I'm going to keep it right there. So this is what it looks like on the opposite side of the side that you sewed together. So what you want to do when you sew up the side right here is to make sure to get the same color of yarn that was on um, as these stitches right here and it'll be the same on both sides since you started um, since we sewed it back and forth from top to bottom now when you sew up the other side like I'm going to get a big piece of the white color yarn and sew this up because even though I just have the white on the chain right here, I do have more white on this side. So when I sew it together, it's, and I fold it back to have the uh, right side out, it'll look like a white stripe going down the side. So I am going to sew this up and I'll see you in a minute. Okay, now that you have both of your sleeves or both of your sides sewn together you can always make the decision right now to just make it a vest and uh, or put on sleeves what I am going to do right now is to sew or not so sorry crochet the lapel on and what you do is you start at the bottom of the right side and you crochet the uh, same stitch the herringbone double crochet all the way up to the last stitch here you know where your where your back starts and then you'll want to crochet across these back remember those six rows 
that we just crocheted the half rows. And I would say, um, I would say put in nine stitches across here or whatever is, uh, I'd say somewhere between nine and 11 stitches right here on the back, like three for every two rows. Or, uh, you know, you could even put two for every row. I might do that. I'll, what I'll probably do is put two for every row. So that would be 12. Yeah, that's what I'm going to do. And these six rows across here, across the back, put 12 of the herringbone double crochets right here. And then go all the way back down this side. And remember... Along these edges, we have 56 stitches. So it'll be 56 up one side, 12 across the back right here, and then another 56 down this side. And what you'll be doing is making the lapel around the front and the neck, up one front, across the neck, and down the other. And I, there's no set number of rows that you would need to put on here. Just go, um, well, here, let's start. Um, I will put on the first row. And the way you attach it is, let me find my yarn. Okay. Oops. One of my children just came in. Okay. So, see what I mean about not finishing the whole thing? Well, I will do my best to describe to you how I actually finished the whole thing. Now, The lapel is super easy. All I did was go back up the row, around, let's see, see, still going, and then that's the back. That makes the top of the lapel and then down the other side. And I made, let's see, one, two, three, four, five, rows of the herringbone crochet stitches just going back and forth kind of like you're crocheting a big blanket and then on the last which would be the sixth row of the lapel I just did single crochets all the way around and of course going up this side I had um, the 112 stitches going across the back it was let's see I did two for each so there should be 12 stitches let me count one two three four five six seven eight nine ten eleven twelve yep 12 stitches you know going across the back here and then down the other side 112 stitches and super easy just go back and forth and back and forth and then you got yourself a lapel and let me see the sleeves super easy too this is the last row of my of my sweater of the main part of my sweater this is where i started the sleeve and when i went around it doesn't matter how big you make the sleeve hole just as long as you have it even on both sides and again i used the herringbone stitch and what I did was I crocheted around, I had 36 stitches. And then I joined together and then turn around so that I'm not going in the same direction, but every time I join the round, I go back. And to join the round, I just slip stitched it um, to the beginning herringbone crochet chained one and then you know when I turned it around uh, went back around the same exact amount of stitches so 
my first three row, rows on my sleeves, I had 36 in the round, 36 in the round, 36 in the round. And you can see, see I crocheted on the front side here, back side here, just exactly the same as you do this, just so it looks the same on the sleeve as it does the rest of the sweater with, you know, going back and forth. Otherwise it would have the, the fabric of the sleeve would have a totally different look. Um, so, so I did that three rows down and then every, let's see, it would be this row, I would decrease by one at the beginning of the row. I'm sorry, the round. This round, I would decrease by one at the end of the round. And this one, I wouldn't decrease any. This next row, decrease at the beginning of the round. This row, decrease at the end of the round. This row, no decrease at all. And I did that down all the way down all the way to the length of the sleeve and you'll know the length of the sleeve when you put it on the way i measured it out is i put it on and if i can go like this with it on and you know it covers my wrist then i'm good uh, a lot of this sweater is just customizable to your body fit and then on the sleeves what i did was the first time when I when I ended, I had 25 stitches in the round. Um, so then this next row after that 25th stitch, I put on 25 single crochets in the round. And then starting with the single crochets, I didn't turn around when I got to the end of the round. I just kept going around. Okay, and this next one what I did was I decreased my single crochets every fifth stitch. So I would go single crochet, single crochet, single crochet, single crochet, and then decrease single crochet. Single crochet, single crochet, single crochet, and then um, decrease single crochet. And I did that all the way around the cuff and, until it had 20 all the way around. So you should end up with 20 there if you're, if you're doing it by mine and the, the way I do it. And the one thing that I want to tell you is just make sure no matter how many stitches you decide to make it around or how many um, stitches you end up with at the end, that they're the same number on both sleeves. Um, Yeah, so they're the same number on both sleeves. But anyway, so I did this one row of 25 stitches, and then the next one, two, three, four, were just single crochet going the same way around. So that's it. This is such an easily um, customizable sweater. It's very customizable and very easy, and. I hope I did a good job in this tutorial for you. Mind you, I'm not a professional, <laughs> but I try. And I will, hopefully with each tutorial I make, I'll get better and better. And I'm hoping the arm will help. I haven't gotten it out and tried it yet. So anyway, if you have any questions, leave them in the comments. And I will try to answer them. I will. Okay, you guys. Have a wonderful, wonderful day. Bye. Hi, everyone. Welcome to my yarn car. My name is Ginger. I am the yarn geek. And, uh, whoa, my hair is being crazy today. See, if I want to have shoulder length hair, all I have to do is put a ponytail right on the top of my head. And let it let it flow down. <laughs> um, that's one of the benefits of having the long hair. <laughs> or 
I can be cousin it. How does that look? <laughs> okay. <sighs> Enough of that nonsense. So, you guys, just a little warning. This may be the wonkiest tutorial in the world because I was all over the place. <sighs> My first tutorial and I said okay a lot in it and I said so a lot in it <laughs> and I don't think I can edit them out but I'm gonna try <laughs> now anyway you will notice in the tutorial that I end at the part where the sweater is uh, still not finished but at the end of this video I am going to I'm going to tell you how I finished it so without further ado that was supposed to be drums <laughs> I will post the tutorial video for this sweater <laughs> okay see you on the other side 